In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very powerful feature of Blender that almost no one talks about. Hopefully after today's video, you're going to be using this feature in most of your animations. For the best experience, I highly recommend wearing headphones. And with that, let's actually find out how to use the speaker within Blender. To add in the speaker, you can go ahead and press Shift A and search for the speaker down here. This is going to add as the source of any audio file that you give it within your 3D scene. To add in an audio file, you can go to the speaker properties right here and open up whatever sound effect or music you want to open. In my case, I'll just open up a music file. Once the audio file is open, you can go ahead and set up your scene. Remember that if this is the source of audio, there has to be something that's listening to this source. So the ears within our scene is actually the camera. So wherever the camera is, that is the position from which we're going to be hearing this audio. So let's just hear the location and rotation of the camera and just place it like this within our scene so that we can hear the audio from the speaker. If you were to now play the animation, you should be able to hear it. Now that we can hear it, there are a few things that you can do without making any changes to the setting. The first thing is positioning your camera to hear the speaker in different places. So in my case, if I was to just move the camera to the left, the speaker is technically to the right of the camera. And so we should be able to hear the sound coming in from the right. If you have headphones, you should be able to hear this very clearly. Now, if you hear some sort of distortion, as you just heard, you can go to your scene properties, go down to audio and choose update animation cache. And that way the distortion should be fixed. Now, apart from it happening only from the right side, you can always move it just like that. And now you should be able to hear it from only your left side of the headphone. Similarly, if we were to just grab our camera and move it far away from the speaker, you should be able to hear it much softer than before. If we were to grab it and move it very close to the speaker, we should be able to hear it much louder than before. So that way, the actual position of the speaker with respect to your camera in the 3DC will be able to realistically affect how you hear the audio. Next, we can start off with the three settings that are present by default within our sound panel. The first one is to mute the speaker. And that way, as expected, you wouldn't be able to hear it even if you were to play the animation. This is especially helpful if you have multiple speakers within your scene and you want to hear the effect of only one of these speakers. That way, you can just mute the other speakers and have only the speaker that you want to listen to be unmuted. That way, you can hear only that speaker. Now, the next option is again very self-explanatory, which is your volume. This determines the volume of that particular speaker. If you reduce it, it'll be much softer. And if you increase it, it'll be much higher. Now, if you want to change the volume of every single one of these speakers within your scene altogether, you can go to your scene properties and adjust the volume from there itself. This will clamp all of the speakers volumes together. The next option is pitch. To understand pitch, we have to understand how sound waves work. And I'm pretty sure this will be familiar right from your school days. Sound waves are essentially pressure waves within the air. And you can actually calculate the frequency or how many times it goes up and down within one second. So let's assume that the X axis is the time axis. And this is your pressure. If the pressure goes up and down one once in one second, the frequency is one hertz and the pitch is correlated with the frequency. The higher the frequency, higher will be the pitch. The lower the frequency, lower will be the pitch. So if you had another sound wave that went up and down more number of times in one second like this, this would have a higher frequency or a high pitch and this one has a low pitch. Hopefully that was easy to understand. However, in most audio softwares, if you were to change the pitch, it automatically stretches or squishes the audio to maintain the same length of audio. However, Blender does not do that. If you were to lower the pitch, it'll take the waveform and actually stretch it out to make sure that it's a lower pitch. But in the process, the audio will actually become longer. So if you were to change the pitch to 0.5 over here, then if the original wave was this long, the new wave will be stretched out to twice the length and become that long. Similarly, if you were to increase the pitch to maybe two, the actual length of the audio will become half of what the original audio was. So let's actually take a listen to what these different pitches sound like. So with the pitch of one, this is what the audio sounds like. <laughs> With a pitch of 0.8, the audio should become much lower. And with a pitch of something like 1.5, it should become a much higher pitch. So that's how pitch works. Next, we have to understand the different distance options that we have over here. As expected, the volume min and volume max is going to determine the minimum volume and the maximum volume independent of the distance. We've already seen how moving the speaker away can actually cause the sound to reduce. If we have the minimum value to be something like 0.1, no matter how far away the speaker is, the volume will never decrease below 0.1 units. Similarly, the max volume determines the max, which means no matter how close the camera is to the speaker, the volume will never 
never go beyond this max value over here. Now, attenuation determines how the loudness of the sound changes with respect to distance. So let's just go to the top view and draw out what this attenuation will look like. For the attenuation, you see you have a max distance and a distance reference. If you were to draw the graph, you'll have some sort of a max distance that you can say is, let's assume here, and let's assume that you have the distance reference over here. The distance reference will determine when the max volume is going to be present, or the volume is going to be at 100%. So let's say that you've determined that the max volume is about this level. So we'll say this is volume and this is distance. If this is the max volume, the max volume will be present at this reference distance. Now, inside the reference distance based on the attenuation the sound will fall off and up till the max distance the sound will also fall off based on the attenuation but after we reach the max distance the sound will no longer fall off and will remain at this exact same level all the way to infinity no matter how far away we go from the camera now this attenuation value determines how fast this falls off if you have a very low attenuation of something like maybe 0.7 instead of falling off like this maybe it'll fall off lower like that if you have an attenuation of something very large it'll fall off maybe faster just like that. So that way with a lower attenuation, you'll have a louder sound present till infinity. And with a higher attenuation, you'll have a lower sound present till infinity. Of course, that is assuming your max distance is present somewhere over here, and it doesn't reach zero before the max distance, although it would not reach zero if you have it at inverse. Talking about inverse, this shape that it's going to follow, as you can see written right here, says that it'll be based on the distance model. To see the distance model, you can go to the scene properties and change the distance model over here. If you see, you have the default set to inverse clamp. Similarly, you can choose linear or exponential and I highly recommend you look at what each of these do but essentially they change the shape in which it actually falls off. So if you have the inverse model it's going to go based on the inverse or the reciprocal of the distance which means as the distance increases the sound will decrease based on 1 divided by distance. On the other hand if you have it at linear it'll fall off as a straight line. So it'll fall off something like this and then once it reaches the max distance it'll become straight just like that. So based on the attenuation it'll have either a steeper slope or a more gradual slope like that. So it's up to you to determine how you want the fall off to be. But with this, let's actually test it out and see how the sound changes. With our speaker present here, let's add in two spheres to show our max distance and distance reference. Although they should be spheres, we'll use circles so that it's easier for us to see. Now let's scale this up to two and let's press shift D and choose S4 to get these two circles. Now this we'll call as the reference distance. So we have to say two meters. And since this one is eight meters, we'll say that the max distance is going to be eight meters. Now let's take our camera and just press GY to bring it in between the reference distance and the max distance. Now if we were to play the animation, you can see how it sounds. Now as we move back on the y-axis, you can see that the volume will keep decreasing. But if you were to go outside this sphere, no matter how far we go, it's going to remain at that same sound that we got right here. It doesn't get lower than that no matter how far back you go. So now our camera is here, all the speakers are here, but even then it's at the same loudness. However, if we were to increase the attenuation from 0.7 to something large, let's go with 10, then you can hear the difference even more. So close to the reference, it sounds like this. Close to the max distance, it sounds like this. It's much softer. The next property that you have is the actual cone. So this cone determines the angular distance up to which you will be able to hear it. So it's very similar to the distance that we were doing, except you have an outer cone, inner cone, and an outer cone volume. Now the outer cone volume determines the maximum volume outside the outer cone. But for that, let's first understand what the outer and inner cones are. If we were to change our inner angle to something like 90, then we would get a cone with 45 degrees on this side and 45 degrees on that side, which means we'd get something that looks approximately like this. And within this region, the camera will always hear the same volume based on these distance preferences. So if we play the animation, while we're inside this cone, the sound is going to sound the same and it won't fall off. Similarly, we have this outer cone angle. So let's say this is 180. This will create a cone that determines up till where there will be some form of attenuation. So in this case, 180 implies 90 degrees this side and 90 degrees that side, which means a straight line like that. Now we have this as our inner cone and that as our outer cone. So now, if our camera was to move between this cone and that cone, there will be some sort of attenuation or fall off. But remember, this outer cone volume determines how much the sound level is going to be outside this outer cone. So we have to keep this at zero and that way anything outside the outer cone will not be heard. And between the inner cone and outer cone, there will be a fall off or attenuation, as we said, from the max value to whatever we determine this outer cone volume to be. So if we were to take our camera and place it here, this is what it sounds like. 
but as we move closer to the outer cone, it starts becoming softer and softer. And as soon as we cross the outer cone, it won't be heard at all. So that's the power of using these cones. And of course, you don't have to have the outer angle to be that high. It could be maybe the outer angle at 90 and the inner angle at 60. And that way, the fall off will be between this region to this region. And anything outside this region will not be heard. That's the power of using cones. Now, last, we have to go to our scene properties and understand these different options over here. We've already gone through the distance model and volume. However, we have to talk about the Doppler speed. Now, the Doppler effect is something that we hear in our day to day lives quite a bit, but we often ignore. Essentially, if we have a sound source over here and we have a listener over here, sound source is going to release audio waves that have a particular frequency and the listener will hear those crests and troughs as it passes by every second. However, let's say that this sound source is giving out the same frequency, but as it's giving out the frequency, the sound source itself is moving towards the listener. So that way it's releasing the first sound wave, but as the sound wave propagates to the next position, it has by itself moved to maybe this position and this is where it releases its next sound wave. Now these two sound waves move a bit more to go maybe here but by the time these two sound waves are here it by itself has reached here and has released the next sound wave. So that way as you can see although it's still releasing sound waves at this frequency the frequency or the waves seem to bunch up and that way the frequency appears to be a higher frequency. So if the audio source is moving towards the listener or the listener is moving towards the audio source the listener will hear these frequencies at a higher frequency than the actual sound is. Similarly if the listener was moving away from the audio source, it'll hear it at a slower frequency than the original sound source. So that's called the Doppler effect. And that's why when you're standing and you hear a car honking or maybe a train passing by you, you'll hear a higher pitch sound as it's coming close to you. But once it crosses you, you'll hear a much lower frequency sound. So hopefully I explained that well enough. But if I haven't, I'll definitely try and create an actual animation regarding the Doppler effect so that it becomes easier for everybody to understand what the Doppler effect is. So that's that's why if you were to actually take the camera and while playing the animation, move your camera front and back, you would be able to hear it goes at a higher pitch and a lower pitch, a higher pitch and a lower pitch. <laughs> Now that distortion is going to happen even if you update the animation cache and you actually animate it because that is the Doppler effect. Now you can choose the Doppler effect from here. Remember, this is the speed of sound in air. You can choose different speeds accordingly because this is what's going to determine how fast the motion is going to be affecting the distortion of the sound. And similarly, you can affect the Doppler factor, which determines how much the Doppler effect changes the frequency of the sound. And lastly, you have to understand that right now the animation is going to just keep restarting by so to change that, you have to be able to know what the length of the actual animation is. For that, create a new window and change this to the video sequencer. There, add in an audio strip or a sound strip over here and choose the same sound that you have. When you're adding that in, make sure you have the start frame at one and then click add sound strip. Now, if you actually look at the name, you'll be able to see that at the end, there will be the actual number of frames that this is. So you can change this to that particular frame number. And that way, the length of your animation will match up the length of the sound file that you have. Apart from that, remember, if you were to change the frame rate to let's say 30 frames per second now then you'll see that the actual number of frames is also going to change over here so now it's going to become 5390 so you have to make sure that you match this up after that as well the next thing is remember that you have to select this and delete it because we don't want the original sound to also be rendered when you render your animation let's say you want the sound to start at a different frame and not frame zero in that case you have to actually go to the nla or the non-linear animation tab there you can see that you have all the different speakers present and all the different soundtracks that were added to those speakers. So in my case, you can see that we have this particular soundtrack and it starts on frame zero itself. If I wanted to start at frame 150, I can press G and move it to frame 150 and then the sound will also start playing from frame 150. You can do this differently for the different clips. Now the best part is that you can use this to create various types of animations and maybe add in a domino sound effect to the different dominoes as your camera moves around and that way it'll sound like the dominoes are falling. You can animate the camera along the path of dominoes as well and you could just use this for different collisions or or things like that that you don't have to do all of this in a separate editor. Apart from that, to render out the audio, make sure that you change your file format to FFmpeg video. Go down to audio and change the audio codec to something that works for you. In my case, I mostly go with MP3 because it creates fairly small files with good enough quality. You can change the bitrate and sample rate according to your necessities. I'll keep it at the default itself. And then you could render out a video file itself, or you can click on render and just choose render audio. 
Hopefully that was interesting and you'll be using this in your various animations. If you liked this video, be sure to let me know down below and do check out other videos where I explain the light path node as well as the vector map node as well. Until my next video comes out, thank you so much for watching, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.